Hey, this is the city commission meeting for Thursday, October the 14th. Um, our, invitations, our invitation tonight will be given by uh, Ralph Lopez, and our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Commissioner Arias. So, would you please stand? Bow our heads, please. <clears throat> Father, thank you for letting us gather here today, Lord, in your presence. Thank you for watching over us as we came here and watch over, please watch over us as we leave. We ask you to guide our words and our actions, Lord, that they be pleasing to you. And all this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Can you hear us? Yeah, I'll second one. All right, roll call, please. Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem DeSantis? Here. Commissioner Moya? Here. Commissioner Villanueva? Here. Commissioner Arias? Here. Mayor Litchfield? Here. Okay, next. On our agenda is public hearing and consider and act upon ordinance 1160. It's the second and final reading and ordinance relating to the zoning ordinance of the city of Tucumcari creating the cannabis regulation ordinance relating to the time, place, and manner regulation of cannabis. Ordinance 1160, second and final reading relating to the zoning ordinance to the city of Tucumcari creating the cannabis regulation ordinance. Our first, uh, we do have a speaker, Jason Allred. Yes, sir. Okay, you need to come up to the mic and be sworn in. Mr. Allred, if you would raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I, Jason Allred. I, Jason Allred. Swear or affirm. Swear or affirm. That the testimony I'm about to give. That the testimony I'm about to give. Is the truth. Is the truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth under penalty of law under penalty of law so i'll be done thank you can you hear me off yes thank you um madam mayor uh, members of the council i appreciate the opportunity to talk my name is uh, jason allard i'm a, an attorney from albuquerque and i represent uh, the interests of a landowner in your town uh, basically, 901 uh, West uh, Tucumcari, or route, old Route 66. It's a building pretty blighted right now. I think there's a hole in the front where someone had wrecked a car into it. It looks like a while ago. I know the power's on, but and it's been gutted, and the roof doesn't leak. But it's obviously in, in dire need of repair, or finding some use or some marketability, and obviously the legalization of cannabis at the state level and 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 your honors all uh, doing some zoning um this presents some opportunity for for mr ross to rehab the the, the building to kind of abate the the blight at least at that at that location and hopefully encourage at least the level of, of jobs that we could say could be number in at least 10 to 20 in in a, in a particular sort of uh, use of the building now we see as part of the, the regulations that clearly under a commercial uh, zone, this would be fine for a dispensary in and of itself. And it's a nice dispensary, but it's, to be quite honest, way too big for just a dispensary. And considering that the, the, the person's interested in leasing that building would want to do it under what's called the vertically integrated um, license offered by the state which allows the licensee to both grow it, uh, retail it, courier it if necessary. And so an ideal scenario is where the, um, at least some of the products to be retailed at the location could be grown in the unused space within the building. And obviously in reading the regulations beforehand, obviously we see that odor is a big concern. And that actually is, is kind of easy to abate in an indoor scenario because current technology and, and uh, carbon filtration combined with just the ability to make a building airtight with foam insulation and, and plastic sheeting or other uh, water vapor barriers, 
easily a grow could be concealed. And, and one thing that we noticed just driving around is there's a lot of empty buildings in this town. And what we see is, is one that each license technically has a maximum of 8,000 plants in maturity that could be granted to any one license holder. And really the limit of plants is determined on square footage. You, you can only jam them in so, so, uh, so close. And in, so there, I could see scenarios where potential license holders, where they're paying the state of New Mexico an extra thousand dollars to have extra locations under a license. So it contemplates both other retail locations, but also other warehouse locations. And just in reading it, I was afraid that, that if production was limited to only agricultural zoned, and that's kind of how I simply read it, then that forces growth out of town or at the outskirts or even forces them to be outdoors, which in a weird way is worse for both security and quality. And if nothing else, anyone that wants to grow this stuff wants the most controlled environment that in the best case scenario, that's indoors. So there's incentive. And I think what I'd like to see is maybe because we have to do it just to make the place nice, is that any operation that would want to enter a building in some otherwise unused or blighted state, they have to rehab it, not just on the inside, but on the outside. Because I think a few even old buildings, even if the windows, you know, you can't see in them, because we don't want you to see in them, but at least it's new stucco, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's not weeds in the sidewalk. It's all those kinds of things that just makes it look used. And maintain because that's one thing we'd want to do is, is obviously maintain and use that building to the best of its facilities but if we wanted to expand our grow because let's say only a thousand plants fits in that unused space of that building we'd want to lease other places in the round town that could accommodate the added space and again adhering to the the, the smell scenario would be a paramount to us because we don't want un best security is people don't really realize it's there and and what we like about also being close into the downtown and revitalizing the inner industrial if not main street is that quite simply security is a big concern the state regulations require almost casino level um, camera uh, situations to be able to deal with that but it almost demands an open relationship with police and the community and you know when we see that big box stores like Home Depot can uh, put a police officer on chief's overtime in their in their parking lot for security. We'd like to think that maybe a chief's overtime scenario would be great for this, uh, for locations to help defray the cost of police. But on the same token, we just see the inner city as being a two minute to three minute response time. And yes, we'll pay for false alarms because we'd rather you show up than not show up because that's what the state wants us to, to make sure happens. So if the if the council would consider the ability to either by variance application or directly putting it into the commercial as long as adhering to odor concerns and obviously appearance concerns, you know, we don't want anything open and obvious. But in that sense, the ability to rehab the, the community is paramount. I know more people would move in because one of the fears is, is that one is two can carry and I've grown up in this state and spent my whole life in Conchas going, going there, you know, since I was a young man. Um, I've seen like, you know, two can carry change a little bit since I was much younger. And I remember going to the powwow when the motel was really cool because we stayed there 20 years ago. The motel's not cool anymore. And, and I'd like to think that because whether you liked it or didn't like it and whether it's not against you, this town needs to get more people off the freeway and to stay a while. And they're going to come through the state and we don't want them to stay in for blizzards and other scenarios. And yes, Route 66 is cool, but maybe if they stayed overnight and ate at a restaurant twice or three times, and yes, they'd come back here and yes, they might be coming from Dallas or wherever, or they might be just passing through. And I'd like to think that we could make the town a little better because right now venture capital from out of state is coming in and bringing and building huge greenhouse complexes. 
$200 million coming in through one group. And they're going to overwhelm the market. And I think Tucum Carry has the real advantage of being just yeah, near a border, near a freeway, and with enough empty space to actually accommodate a burge in the industry if it's open to the, the sort of the possibilities. And I thank you for your time and appreciate you very much. Thank you. And of course, I would take questions if you'd like. Do you have any? The 900, uh, the building, is that the old? Uh, the apartment? Oh, wow. It's the Pow Wow West. Yes. It would be was, Higgly Wiggly, the long yes. grocery store. Yeah. And then it was a bowling alley. Yeah. Yeah. Like Mount Higgly Wiggly's taking you back to when I was a kid because I lived right down the street from my whole childhood until it caught fire. So, does this gentleman have anybody already looking at his properties? For the yes. Person? Oh, he is. Yes. And, and I mean, and he's a contractor and he wants to come fix it up and make it look good. And, but definitely, if he knows what he's getting into, that that makes a big difference, and, and obviously wanted to, to to make it because he bought it a long so time. So what, uh, what? How much square footage are you going to use for the dispensary part? How much square footage will you be using for the grower? I think the building is a hair over ten thousand square feet, oh, okay. and uh, and we'd like to only use a thousand, so one apartment's worth for the dispensary. Really, the nice awning that's up front could be revitalized. We, we like the, the idea of in a Route 66 scene, but that's got to be part of it, the Art Deco. We like the idea of a, of a, of a old school diner, maybe be in the environment when you walk in. Um, and, and yeah, doing the something state also, The state also says that you have to have so much square footage also for what we call the manufacturing part, where you have to dry it and process it. And right. And that's not part of the growers part. Right. No, I mean, we would just want to utilize the entire business uh, building for its use instead of having storage. And and so in that context, yes, there would be processing room and it would bring probably total growth down to 8,000 square feet or less. Or less yeah. And and that's why we would want the opportunity to expand into the community. And maybe there's another empty building around that could take the overflow under the license if we're able to, to make it a little better. And we look at just with shifts between the necessary, just make sure it doesn't die kind of employees down to the storefront is really like a convenience store. So you have shifts and multiple people working, but we can see it employing 10 to 20, depending on how many things we could, they could bring in. And they obviously have to be locals and they have to people, be people that can pass the background check. So everyone is you know, it's like clean records only uh, need apply. And, and you did notice that in the ordinance that we're passing tonight, it also gives you a very end of where you can come in and get a waiver or whatever. Yes, and and and, so and that gives you good leverage there. Yeah, you know. yeah, no, and, and we we're willing to go, but obviously the less that we have to argue about on a case by case basis, the better. But we're willing to do whatever your honors would would want us to do because we just we think that this town, in a way of a weird way of just having been big once. And having all this space, it, you know, what's going to fill it back up again? You know, it's just it. And this is the only new industry that's come about that I think can be grabbed onto. It is, and and you have a freeway, and so it made it simple sense for us to come talk to you about it. Yeah, because even if the commission doesn't change, you still got the option to come to the commission and get and get your bearing. And so yes. all in all, it's not locked in. Yeah, no, and I and I appreciate that because I know on the second reading it's kind of set in stone. We'd have to have another hearing, so you know I, I get I get that, and I'm sorry I didn't come to the last one, but uh, but I just appreciate your time because you know I think this is a real opportunity. I went around town saying this is great, and you know and you wouldn't necessarily say that in any other context. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arch. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Did we have any call-ins or anything? Um, I have a caller number one and an event, Kent, and I'm not sure if they were wanting to speak on behalf of campus ordinance or what this was in regards to. Is there anybody online that would like to uh, have any comments for the public hearing? I would. Who is I? All right, then would you please go ahead and um, the city clerk will go ahead and swear you in. Okay. Yvette Kent. 
That's me. Who is me? Yeah, Red yeah. hands. Okay. Okay, raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I, Yvette Kent. Go ahead. Yvette. I don't hear you. She muted? No, it, she can't hear you. Can you hear me now, Yvette? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. If you would raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. Okay. I, Yvette Kent. I, Yvette Kent. Swear or affirm. Swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give that the testimony I'm about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth is the truth and nothing but the truth under penalty of law under penalty of law. Thank you. Thank you, Yvette. Any my go ahead. She said she did not hear the last part. She 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 we just said thank you. Yeah, I said thank you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you may go ahead. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, my name is Yvette Kent, and I am old school from Chicken Carry, New Mexico, graduate in 1980. My brother Anthony Kent lives there and uh, works there. My family was raised there, and I'm coming back into Chicken and Carry, um, purchasing a property also into the cannabis industry. Um, before cannabis and everything, all the licensing is done, my intent is to um, bring in the CBD aspect of, of um, the cannabis industry. I checked earlier on when I first started um, looking at properties to purchase to see if the zoning was correct for what the intent was. And yes, in fact, it is. And I am intending to um, file for the licensee for cannabis cannabis dispensary, also an integrated grow, not as large as the one that they're talking about, mainly because I'm more focused on the courier delivery and the smoke lounge when, when that passes in. Now, when I'm bringing up the smoke and hookah lounge, my patio is outside. Uh, it's not an inside lounge type situation. It's more of a barbecue situation where people would sit outside and smoke hookah. So I wanted to make sure that I was clear on what I read in the laws about that being uh, okay to have hookah on the outside in on a patio setting. We have Mr. Van Vleck online. That may be a question for him. And yes. I can't hear anyone. Yeah, uh, ma'am, the way the ordinance is structured right now is the, uh, the public consumption areas are indoor only right now. Okay, and what are the requirements for the HVAC? Because I wasn't able to find any ventilation requirements. Well, we haven't quite gotten that far. Uh, this, is a, this is a work in progress. I understood that, and I was I was also understanding when I was reading it that there could be a waiver for outdoor if it was further on the outside of town and not in the inside of town. Well, that's certainly something we could discuss. I'd have to go back and look at the actual cannabis law that was passed by the state. Uh, a lot of what I put in this ordinance as, as a uh, discussion item, I believe, comes right out of the state statutes. And so if, clearly, if the state requires that our consumption areas be fully enclosed, and I'm not sure we can do we can do anything broader than that. But I, I, I put this down as a concern, and to the extent that it's something that the commission wants to discuss with me later, uh, I'd be happy to consider whether or not we can accommodate uh, that kind of uh, that kind of activity. Certainly, your standard certainly your standard hookah smoking can be can be done outside. It's just the cannabis aspect of it right now anyway uh is uh, we're gonna we're gonna limit it to inside and with with uh, hvac regulations to follow okay perfect so the luca presently is okay and cannabis is going according to law as it gets further down the road yeah so long as and uh, let me prep let me you know clarify my remarks so long as the uh facility that you're using does not offend uh, the D. Johnson indoor clean area. And if it's going, if it's going to be done outdoors, it probably will not. Although it has to be a certain number of feet away from an entrance or an exit, uh, employees can't be 
can't be required to be subjected to the smoke and secondhand smoke, things of that nature. So you're going to have to be careful how you structure your outdoor smoking lounge, if you want to call it that. Uh, but uh, there is there is some, that possibility that that aspect can be done outside. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate the answers. Thank you, Ben. And for the audience here and the listening audience on the radio, um, and I'm going to meet uh, the person that was just speaking is our city attorney, um, Mr. Randy Van Vleck. So, for your own information. Okay. Is there anyone else? I would, Mayor, just for clarification, um, the way I read this, and I could be wrong, Mr. Van Vleck could correct me, but our current variance uh, is specific to setback requirements. I'm not sure it references anything in regards to, to zoning variances. So I just want to be clear on that. Is that the way you interpreted, Mr. Van Vleck? Well, you, 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 but with respect to the cannabis, it really only specifies that the, the uh, zones that it can be, uh, that, it's, that it's permitted, and that's the section six of the, of the ordinance. Any, Variances or uh, other times of special use procedures are going to be uh, encased in the overall zoning ordinance. So, to the extent that there are various uh, possibilities or conditional use or special use permits available, uh, that's going to go with whatever the particular zoning uh, classification is. So, if it's a C1 use, the C1 conditional uses and special uses would apply. So, we have to go back into the to the, to the guts, if you will, of the, of the zoning ordinance to determine the extent of any type of variance that can be it can be granted. Thank you for clarification. I appreciate that. Okay. Anything else on the public hearing? I just had a couple. Uh, I had a, I had a couple of things here, and, and then the ordinance that we need to look at, and that was in page eleven, uh, C. Uh, under section operation and requirement, uh, and it says there should be no outdoor cultivation, and yet we go to page 10 under section C, location of establishment, you go to B, and it says a zone uh, for growth and process existing industrial and residential zone utilizing land for our culture purpose would be grandfathering allowing to grow so we have a conflict in this ordinance and i think what we need to do is uh, uh because a huge amount of our we have a lot of real estate that is uh, actually being utilized to cultivate cultivating and we discussed this and we all agreed on it that it was going to be okay to be grandfathering people were utilizing that that land and so we have a conflict right here we need to straighten it out if I may, Commissioner, uh, the, the the reference in Section 6 that you're talking about as far as grandfathering, you know, we're talking about being able to grandfather in agriculture uses for production, but then notwithstanding the fact that they still have to be indoors. Uh, the the order, the um, uh, uh, the security, uh, just allowing outdoor growth uh, is just... Uh, uh, really should be a, a non-starter because there's no way to adequately protect that crop from being vandalized, from being stolen, from being appropriated. Uh, and but I'm even the state has the regulations for those. Uh, the next county is permitting uh, outdoor growth at all. Yeah, but the state has regulations for that already. Well, but, well, how does Colorado do that? You know, Colorado seems to do a lot of outgrowing outside drawings you're having and, and, and actually there's no difference in whether we're in the county or in the city uh, the, a lot of undeveloped land exists within our municipality so I think we have a conflict and we agreed on this and a lot of people have talked to me about this because we do have up to 70,000 uh, up to 70 acres that are utilized for cultivation at one location but the state has their rules and regulations where they're mandating the security and everything be done proper outdoor growing so we have a little conflict here and we need to see how we can better solve it well i'll certainly 
be happy to go look at the state regulations. Like I said, I'm not aware of a, of a single group facility that. No, no, they have all the securities and everything that's mandated for outside growing. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the state is, is wavering. It. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, those regulations are pretty clear and operationally defined by the state. If you look at the medical cannabis right now, a lot of the growth that are being done along the Rio Grande and, uh, are very uh, mostly outside growers. You have a lot of uh, inside growers, but you also have a lot of outside growers. I, like I said, I'll be happy to look into it, Commissioner. Uh, the only outdoor growth that I'm aware of currently that's permissive under the state statute is personal use growth. Any kind of commercial growth that I know of uh, right now is contemplated to be indoors. But like I said, I will be happy to, to run this down for you. Yeah, because I think a lot of people are also looking at the outside grower in part because I know there have been several people in coming into our community that are in the county that are looking at real estate property that is actually our culture outside growing for outside growing and that's I know it's hard to secure it but this is our final reading so we have to see what we're going to do here am I correct? I mean, like I've been telling all my clients you know this is a moving target and just because you pass up tonight doesn't mean you can't go back in a month or two and, and change it and revise it and, and amend it and so yeah uh, this is just a very first cut and what is really a moving target it is and i understand that part but once, I, once you pass something it is hard to go back to amend and you and i know that you know i mean it is not as easy as you like it to be sometimes i like to see have it affect the right way you know what i'm saying and, and not have have you come back and amend things? And at, this point, at the beginning, I would err on the side of, of uh, grandfathering those A1 zones for indoor cultivation only until we clarify what outdoor cultivation is is permissive and how we go about well, securing it. So we won't be able to grow outside. Concerned about that conflict? Yes. And loosen it up later. Yeah, but you understand that it doesn't matter if we went ahead and okayed it for it to be grown outside because state supersedes municipalities and 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 that won't be able to be done no permit will be given to them by the state to grow outside so uh i don't know uh how to handle this better you know if the state doesn't allow it it's not going to happen you understand because state supersedes municipalities I would, I would recommend that we strike that there shall be no outdoor cultivation, but outdoor cultivation should be deemed uh, by the regulations of the state. So the state, okay, then we don't even have to amend it. That would be the best way because if the state doesn't permit it, then we've just had this put in here, but we don't have to go back and amend it later that, that, and loosen it up or whatever. We can get this right the first time. Let's go ahead and do it. Your recommendation sounds to that more. Uh, so we would strike C completely? No, we just the part that says there shall be no outdoor, outdoor cultivation. It should, you know, the wording maybe should be outdoor cultivation should be due to the recommendations of the, uh, the state. So, or in that effect, I'm not a, a lawyer. So. Outdoor. Mm -hmm. That way, if the state decides not to make it permissible, we're not having to go back in. And, you know, who says in two years they might make it? Okay, so at the end of that sentence, after the word growing, just put a comment and say consistent with state regulations or state law and regulations. That works. That. Mm -hmm. that works. That would consist. consistent. With. Just say consistent with state statutes and regulations. Okay, that means they can go ahead and do all the requirements, security, and everything they want to grow in the community since we have so much vacant agricultural land in the community. And that will take care of that problem. Randy, you're saying to add that language to section six A B. Is that correct? Yeah, um, yeah, I would suggest that. At the very least, if you're not willing to strike it all together, is just put a put a disclaimer in there that it's gotta be that any growing has got to be consistent with state law and and uh, applicable regulations. So just for the record, we're talking about section eight 
operational requirements uh, letter C, correct? Yeah. I was talking about adding something to section C where you're talking about giving the grandfathered to A1 zone. Oh, okay, that's not, that's, that's in A, and that's in page 10. Well, if we fix B, C, we'll fix B. Right, yeah. <laughs> if you do, if you fix 8C, then that'll take care of it. That covers A, a B. Yeah, we need to fix okay, and then do we have to scratch out uh, outdoor and just leave it? Uh, or is there, there shall be no outdoor. Just scratch that out and let it go with the with the with the new recommendation you're doing. So, Mr. Van Vleck, just real quick, for their the commissioners are getting their page numbers are from um, the packet that's online. So when uh, Commissioner uh, Moya says page 11. Okay, not like that. Okay, now I've been up there now. Okay. Um, you know, there's some specific provisions in the law dealing with the, you know, the, 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 the storage and display of, of products. So you got to be careful. You can't sell, you can't store and display cannabis products outdoors. That's you know, correct. Mm -hmm. requirements that you know, you, you can't have a storefront that shows you know, the box and the, and the product through the storefront window. And so, yeah, how you want to fix this is, uh, you know, it's really up to you. Uh, but uh, again, I'm cautioning you against the notion of, of outdoor cultivation. I just don't think that's a. Uh, but remember, this is going to be. Way to go. Yeah, on this area, this is going to be areas that are designated for that purpose. It's not the residential area. So I think what we need to do here, there shall be, and then just scratch out that uh, no outdoor cultivation and allow the uh, uh, the law that you, I mean, the addendum that you want is in there so that it'd be okay. Because if the state is going to approve it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter what the city wants. It's not going to happen. They can put greenhouses or blue houses or whatever and make it work, you know. But... Uh, that's the only thing I was concerned about because I know Colorado does a lot of outdoor cultivation and I don't know how the state's going to do it here. Still, everything's still in, in, in very early stages. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and now. So I think we just need to get clarification on the language that Mr. Yeah. Ben Fleck wanted to add. I'm not sure if he was in the correct section or not. No. So I agree. I think we need to specifically address section 6A and then get that wording fine-tuned and then kick over to section 8c that way we're clear on what we're discussing no that's six eight okay. so yeah. page 10. Yeah. that's page 10. location of cannabis establishments so the a1 zone for growing and processing should be consistent with the state's law and regulations mm -hmm. and then the same thing should be said over on section 8 uh part c yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you look at this, this is the thing. It has to be grandfathered. It has already had to have been used for agriculture. Yeah. This is not going to be like me living on Second Street, wanting to put a drawer in the backyard. This has to be grown. That I thought I was using that as an agriculture yes. production. It doesn't say that you can do it anywhere in the town. It just says specifically where it has been utilized as agriculture. Mm -hmm. But you can't have one. No, no, yeah, 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 with the other one, that's what I was bringing it up. Okay, so I think we've established that. Now, what I need, what I need from Mr. Van Vleck is the language that needs to be, how it needs to read, so I can make those changes to this ordinance, and they can be published, sent over to the newspaper tomorrow. So, well, if this is the way the commission wants to go, what I would suggest is at the end of section in section six. Part of small b and insert at the end of that sentence uh, consistent with state laws and regulations. Good. So consistent with state statutes and uh, regulations. And if we're going to do that, then we need to go back to down, like the commissioner said, we need to go back down now to section 
So on section six, location of cannabis establishment, at the end of letter B, we will just add consistent with state statutes and uh, regulations. Um, section eight, operational requirements. Letter C, uh, the words outdoor cultivation will be deleted. Those would be the amended. And pages. those are the amended. And, and the one that she read on the outdoor is section A, uh, part C of page 11. So ISO removes that. Do I have a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Moya? Yes. Commissioner Guerrero? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Yes. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis? Yes. Do we go on? Yes. Now, are there any considerations of changes or deletions to the agenda? Thank you, Mr. Van Black. You're welcome. I'll be back in touch, folks. Okay. Thank you. No, no, no corrections. And I would entertain a motion to accept the agenda as is. Madam Mayor, make a motion to approve the agenda as is. Go ahead. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Gianluva? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Yes. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis? Yes. Commissioner Moya? Yes. Next on the agenda is public comments. Citizens wanting to speak during this time must sign up prior to the start of the meeting. Public comments is an opportunity for citizens to comment on non agenda items. This is not for discussion nor questions and answers. Citizens will be given three minutes to speak. And tonight we have Mr. David Brenner who would like to make a public comment. Good evening, Mayor, Commission. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, you may recall a couple of months ago I presented before you and mentioned a contest with USA Today. And I am pleased to announce that uh, Tucum Carey has two places in the United States of America that won on the top 10 list. Uh, Roadrunner Lodge came in at number one, and um, our associates at the Blue Swallow Motel also made that top 10 list. Um, I would like to see some more establishments in Tucum Carry make it on future lists. Uh, and I'm in communication with USA Today to see if their curated list uh, for the next vote uh, can include more to carry properties. Um, <clears throat> so on that note, uh, wonderful support from both the city and all of our followers. We're sincerely grateful. Uh, if it weren't for them, uh, none of us would have performed as well as we did. Uh, that is just a testament to the, uh, the wonderful experience that our establishments provide Route 66 travelers and travelers who are passing through for other means, right? Uh, now, second to that, we also have recently had a, a uh, luxury bus tour that came to Tucum Carry. Uh, this is the first time that I know of that a luxury bus tour has come to Tucum Carry and chosen to stay at some of our vintage establishments. And uh, I have to, to uh, say a great thanks to Alan Doherty, with the Historic Society and his um, work to put together a progressive dinner package and entertainment for this progressive, uh, sorry, not progressive, for the luxury bus tour. Um, we hit it out of the park. We, we are known now to this specific tour operator that Tucum Carry is definitely a place to stay on that list. Uh, we are looking at ways to expand on that success and we've met with the tour operator to ask how can we market Tucum Carry in general to a larger number of tour buses. Uh, what we've learned um, over the few past few weeks is that every tour bus that stays overnight in Tucum Carry, we should count on about $5,000 of economic activity. Um, a nice little yeah, chunk of change, right? So, uh, in my quest to make Tucum carry a net importer of money from the tourism side, you know, cannabis will do its own thing, right? <laughs> but on the tourism side, uh, we're seeing a lot of progress made in several areas. Uh, we're going to see Tucum carry become the next great art town with the help of many other people um, who are 
looking to bring a, a new level of culture to this area. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Next on the agenda is the, cons is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is approved by a single motion. Any member of the commission may request an item be transferred to the regular agenda from the consent agenda without discussion or vote. And tonight we would be approving the commission meeting minutes for September 23rd. Do I have any other things that need to be added or deleted Sorry. from the consent agenda? If not, I would entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda. Madam Mayor, I make a motion that we pass the consent agenda for September 23rd commission meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Adias? Yes. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis? Yes. Commissioner Moya? Yes. Commissioner Villanueva? Yes. Next on the agenda is resolution 2021-31. It's a resolution to participate in the transportation project fund and pledge match matching fund. And I believe Ralph Lopez will be presenting. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, this is for the uh, project that we were awarded for a million dollars, including our match uh, for the uh, Dahoney uh, or the Barnes Gamble area street improvements. Mm -hmm. We actually did a resolution for this. They made us do one early, and it was actually even before the agreement, so it didn't have the numbers on it when I sent it to them. After we got the agreement, I resend it, but they required, they sent us one with the agreement and asked us to go ahead and approve this one. So it's basically the same thing to participate in the project, and uh, I assume pledge matching funds most of them. Uh, we, we did apply for a match waiver on this, but we haven't heard on it yet. So at this time, we'd still be responsible for our share of $50,000, which is 5% of the total cost. So at this time, I'd like to ask for approval and stand for questions. Thank God. Any questions regarding resolution 2021-31? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve this resolution. Madam Mayor, I make a motion to approve resolution 2021-31. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis? Yes. Commissioner Moya? Yes. Commissioner Gamela? Yes. Commissioner Adias? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next is resolution 2021-32, designating banking signatory. Mark, I think you're going to be presenting this. Yes, ma'am, I will be. This is a required resolution for us to provide to our bank uh, to update our list of signatories. With this on the city side of things, we will be adding Samantha Garcia, our assistant director of finance. Um, on the police um, signatories, we'll be uh, amending for interim chief uh, Pete Rivera. We'll also be adding Sergeant Sean Slate as well as Detective Reyes Gonzalez. Okay. Any questions regarding this resolution? There being that, I would entertain a motion to, to accept resolution 21-32. Uh, Mayor, I make a motion that we accept resolution 2021-32 designating banking signatories. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis? Yes. Commissioner Moya? Yes. Commissioner Gamba? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Yes. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. And I will need everyone's signature on that tonight. Okay, please. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of sell for services proposal for Chicken Ferry Landfill under bids and contracts. Yes, ma'am, I'll be presenting that as well. Um, we had talked about some of these ideas at previous commission meetings. And to elaborate on that, uh, we're coming towards the end of the life of our current existing sale out at the landfill. Uh, there are some improvements that need to be made out there. Um, we don't get rain often, but when it it does rain here, it comes down uh, by the inches in a flash flood type matter. So um, I request your approval. I will go into detail. There's multiple tasks associated with this agreement. Um, the first is project management side of things that will be handled by Park Hill. Uh, all this will be handled by Park Hill, but the, the first <coughs> task is project management. The next is the automated leachate system. That is the pumping system for when it rains. Uh, the third is a drone survey. The fourth is volumetrics and longevity. 
and then the fifth is additional engineering services. Um, that survey, the drone survey, volumetrics and longevity is what's going to let us know how much life we have left on that current cell uh, to see how quickly we have to start moving towards um, the design and construction of cell number four. So this is all important. Uh, the budget's there. The grand total of this uh, specific, these tasks for the agreement comes out to $45,886. Uh, and again, the budget's there, so I'd stand for any questions or comments. Anyone have a question concerning the land field stuff? Okay, I would entertain a motion to um, approve cell four services proposal for chicken carry land field. Madam Mayor, I make a motion that we approve the cell four services. Do I have a second? I'll Roll call, please. Commissioner Webb? Yes. Commissioner Genova? Yes. Commissioner Adias? Yes. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis? Yes. Okay. Next is the letter of binding commitment for drinking water state revolving loan fund. I believe Sharia's listeners will be presenting that. Good evening. Um, this le uh, letter of binding commitment is for a loan from drinking water to complete the rehab of the 11th Street concrete tank. The total loan amount is for uh, $483,607 with a principal forgiveness of 75%, meaning the city will only have to pay back $120,902 over 15 years. Okay, may I ask for your approval? Any questions regarding this? I would entertain a motion to approve this letter of binding commitment for drinking water state revolving loan fund. I'll make a motion we approve the letter of binding commitment for drinking water state revolving loan fund. Do I have a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Guerrero? Yes. Commissioner Adias? Yes. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis? Yes. Commissioner Moya? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next is transportation project fund grant agreement. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, this is the agreement for our transportation project fund, also for the uh, uh, Barnes Gamble Edition Street project. Uh, the whole agreement is a uh, project total cost is a million dollars, and uh, our, our share will be 50000 if we don't get the match waiver on it. Uh, it's for street work and, and combined with several other projects, actually, or several other grants that we've received. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. They did spell Dehoney wrong on the agreement. and. Uh, Mark and I agreed to have that fixed and stuff too, but at this time, we'd like to go ahead and ask for your approval. Anyone have any questions concerning this? I would entertain a motion to approve the transportation fund project fund grant agreement. I uh, make a motion that we approve the transportation project fund grant agreement. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, go call, please. Commissioner Adias? Yes. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis? Yes. Commissioner Oya? Yes. Commissioner Gamela? Thank you. Yes. Okay, next is new business um, approval of a multi family project borrows management, agent management certification regarding chaparral. Yes, ma'am, I'll be presenting this. This is a, a form that's required by USDA that is. Approved on an annual basis. This spells out exactly what must be done through our, our managing uh, partner, which is Monarch Properties. Um, it states that they have the required hazard insurance, uh, public liability insurance, etc. This is for a three year term. Um, and at this point, I'd ask for your approval. You said we have to do it annually, but this is for a three year term. Uh, I see this uh, 2024. It is for some reason, even though it goes out for three years. I've been told, I spoke with Monarch earlier this week, that it's still something that's approved annually. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor, if I may. Okay. Uh, why, has, why haven't we um, had any more updates from them? At least I feel quite a bit. Yeah, but we have financial. That's been my fault for not emailing it. Okay. We'll have further comments about that uh, during our manager's report. Okay. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the project borrows management agent management certificate certification regarding chaparral apartments. 
I make a motion of the approval of the multifamily project borrows management agents management certification for architectural apartments. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mayor Litchfield, yes. Mayor Pro Tem, Yes. Commissioner Moya? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Yes. Next is the approval of the self certification letter regarding Chaparral apartment. Yes, ma'am. This self certification letter is another requirement from USDA. Um, this compliance letter, it, it states that the borrower, which is now the city of Tucumcari, which used to be the housing authority of the city of Tucumcari, is in compliance with the nine performance standards. And uh, the following has a, a summary of uh, our compliance requirements. Uh, operating accounts, security deposit accounts, tax and insurance accounts, reserve accounts, I mean, it goes on and on. Um, again, this is all managed by Monarch Properties. They've done a great job. I'd ask for your approval. Any questions, comments? On the page, on that first page of the agreement, it's still on the bottom, it's reflecting the Housing Authority of the City of Tucumcari. Um, the Housing Authority of Tucumcari has never officially dissolved because this was the last property that was to be transitioned. That property was never transitioned, therefore, um, the City of Tucumcari, through our commission, is the active body of the Housing Authority of Tucumcari. So it's still active? It is. Okay, do I entertain a motion to approve the self-certification letter regarding Chaparral Apartments? Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve the self-certification letter for the Chaparral Apartments. Do I have a second? I'll second, Mayor. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem DePantis? Yes. Commissioner Moya? Yes. Commissioner Villanueva? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Yes. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. Okay, next is the approval to transfer uh, $1,500 from the executive funds to, propose, to promotional funds for National Parks Radio. Yes, ma'am, we had an opportunity that kind of fell on our lap. Um, we had this very good band, National Parks Radio, which was traveling through on tour. Um, in doing so, um, Connie Leveland from Main Street was able to coordinate um, them to stay and, and perform here in Tickencary. Um, with that being said, she proposed um, to utilize lodger's tax funds to, to make this happen. Um, it was a short turnaround time. Everybody came together to make this happen. Lodger's tax board had a special meeting on Sunday, last Sunday. Um, in doing so, they were able to approve um, promotional funds to, to meet the $1,500. Um, it was, I'm assuming, a recommendation, I think, from the Lodger's tax board, as well as myself, um, Lodger's tax has seen an increase. Um, they've, doing good. they've been doing very well due to an uptick in, in tourism. Uh, with that being said, I felt it was a lot more appropriate to take those funds out of the executive side um, to keep promotional funds available for the other items as needed for promotion. Um, so tonight, uh, I ask for your approval to please uh, transfer the $1,500 from, from from executive to cover that cost. That way we're not having to tap into our promotional funds. Okay, any comments, questions? This is a very good event. I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, and it was a spur of the moment. Yeah. I think it was less than seven days. And uh, I, I commend Connie Loveland for jumping on that because I remember back in high school, they used to have these free events, little concerts and stuff, dance recitals that would come to town. And it was actually really nice. And I want to applaud the the community, those that showed up to support it uh, for being at the last minute, it was uh, really nice to see as many vehicles pull up as it did. Good. There's nothing, nothing but good comments by my It was very well received. All right, so I would entertain a motion to approve this transfer of $1,500 from executive funds to promotional funds. I'll make that motion. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Moya? Commissioner Gamba? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Yes. Mayor Litchfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem DePlantis? Yes. Okay, next on the agenda is the city manager's report. Yes, ma'am. We haven't had uh, a commission meeting in quite some time due to how things fell on the calendar. Um, the first thing I wanted to bring up since it was fresh uh, on topic was the Chaparral Apartments. I did have the opportunity to meet uh, with the vice president. Mr. Jack McGillery, we had talked with him previously in an effort to try to transfer 
um, the Chaparral Apartments over to Monarch Properties, they, are, they were willing to um, accept that at the time. I brought that question up as we were speaking this week, and that offer still is on the table. They're willing to um, look at the possibility of trying to get this property transferred over to Monarch Properties and out of the city's hands. Uh, as stated at the end of that agenda item we just approved, um, the city's still on the line as the housing authority of the city of Chippenkerry. What that means now is we stand on our on our own, not as an entity, as a Chippenkerry Housing Authority, and we'll be responsible for paying off that loan, which is upwards of nearly $600,000, which we discussed budget. We had a uh, work session earlier talking about potential new position. Um, I just don't see how it's feasible that the city would be able to afford that, to, to have to pay that. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to open up some kind of work session informal meeting between the city commission and Monarch Properties. Um, I do not believe that the city of Tiffin Carey is in the housing business. Monarch Properties has the expertise to run this property. Um, again, there's a lot of liability associated with it. This board, what, the board of the housing authority as, as, a, as an entity of the city of Tiffin Carey is still out there because it was never completely 100% dissolved based on the fact that we still have one property that was never transitioned over. Uh, we lost out the first time. We chose not to, to transfer it over with Eastern Regional. Um, I begged them to try to take it back. That's that's gone. That offer's not on the table. Um, Monarch Properties previously, about a year ago, offered the same thing to try to take it off our hands. Again, we chose not to do so. Um, this is the third time. I hope it's the charm. I'd like to, to continue those conversations. Um, I'm just worried about the financial responsibility that the city would have to face and what that would lead to uh, if we had to do that. So um, that's the latest on the Monarch properties uh, for the Chaparrales. Uh, within this time, uh, we had an inspection by EPA uh, of our laboratory as well as our wastewater uh, facility treatment plant. Um, I feel it went very well. Um, I'm optimistic, I haven't seen the final results yet, but I, I think it went very well. Um, also within that time, Myself, as well as some other staff, everyone from Parks and Recreation Department to the Police Department, uh, HR, myself, we had a chance to meet with an additional insurance company, uh, somebody that we worked with previously. Um, there's been some concern, obviously, with qualified immunity insurance rates are going up everywhere uh, within the state of New Mexico. With that being said, um, this is a larger insurance company that I hope we have the opportunity with more customers, they're able to spread that increase in those insurance costs a lot further with more clients than a smaller insurance company. I'm, I'm being optimistic and hoping that they come in with a good bid. The insurance takes effect November 1st, so uh, we're getting all our quotes and everything submitted, um, and I'm hoping that we could go back with this individual insurance company. Um, it was positive. They noticed the hard work that we put in the past two years. This is something that kind of is unseen and isn't out there for the public. Uh, they don't understand the behind the scenes things we're doing to change policies, to hold uh, department heads and, and employees more accountable to, to lower our liability risk. Um, again, they, they had nothing but great things to say about the city of Token Carry and where we've gone within that time. Um, so that was, that was very optimistic. Um, it's been, Busy as usual, we've had um, a lot of different things go on in the, in the right direction, all positive things. Uh, we had the concert last night, that was something great. Uh, we're also looking at making some changes uh, with our recreation departments uh, with hopes of, if everything goes well, potentially having a basketball season starting up in the winter. Um, that was also a hot topic that came up in that insurance conversation, making sure we're doing what we have to and being safe and following state guidelines when it comes to the public health order. We also had, um, geez, there are so many things going on. I met with the um, one of the solar companies that was interested in, in providing a small solar project here in Chicken Perry. Those talks continue. There's still two uh, entities really interested in, in doing something here in Tiffin Carry a project. Um, the ideal property is still uh, by the Worldly Mills area because it's close to 
uh, at XL's facility and uh, substation. Uh, so that's still going on. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about, there, I could go on and on and on, but we already had a, a lengthy meeting. Um, the next thing was our calendar for the holidays. I think it's something we need to address and talk about at the next commission meeting as a, an action item and how it could provide it's my intention that uh, the next scheduled meeting would be on Veterans Day, which that's uh, the holiday we observe. It would be off that day. The following meeting would be on Thanksgiving. And then we also need to keep in mind um, the December calendar as well. So uh, just to put on our radar and to be aware of it, that that would be an agenda item uh, next commission meeting. And with that, that concludes my manager's report. I have a question. You know, uh, I understand dumping uh, the cap rose is okay, you know, but at the same time, you know, when we had the transferring our public housing to the regional, it was uh, really everything was great, everything was except for well, no, no sooner than later than a year, and those projects really began to look like ghetto projects where they won't cut the yards, they won't clean anything. Uh, what guarantee are we going to have is the same thing from this uh, chaparral that people are calling us, calling me, and all that. And I would tell them, well, we don't own them anymore. You know, it didn't even take a year to make it look nasty. You know what I mean? I mean, this is what happened. We always get this thing about we don't want the responsibility, we don't want nothing. Then we make our, our little community look nasty after somebody uh, takes over and doesn't follow the rules. And of course, with this public housing. We didn't have a choice because the federal government was on our back, but we may not have been able to rebuttal it to somebody else. And, and they came in here and really promoted regional. And man, did I ever see so many empty apartments and everything else, which we never saw before when the city is operating. Uh, what guarantee are we going to have that Martin Archie doesn't follow the same patterns or the same footsteps as different people? And people are complaining about really nobody at the office, they can't get any service from the regional area, nobody returns your calls. I say, hey, the city doesn't own it. Well, and I think it's two completely separate situations. They're both housing facilities. It's two different entities. One's Eastern Regional Housing Authority. The other is our properties. I'm not dumb. I know they're two different ones, OK? So don't, don't get a little bit like that. I know that, OK? But the guarantee is that that I don't like the idea of uh, somebody promising a rose garden and then coming out here and you know, get the, the weeds out of their yard. Doesn't Monarch do the chaparral? They do, yes. They do also quay. I meant the quay. Well, again, the, the reason behind this isn't to pawn it off or, or dump it on anybody. It's the fact of the city can't afford to operate it. The city is not. Well, have you looked at the entities that might be interesting? That we might be able to check the background. Monarch has a history with the quay. And the San Jose apartments, I think, and they seem to always be having trouble. So, you know, remember we had the discussion here with one art about so, how many times police are being called out there. All these men. Do we want the chaparral to fall in the same category? I think it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Inevitable. There's going to be police calls. Stuff's going to happen. That's just part of the part of what goes on. Um, well, we have a little more control if they're still at the same. And, and I guess in, in control, I don't know what you're, you're getting at as in far as words, we control. always come in, call management in and, and tell them this needs to be done because we have a better leverage. But on that, no problem, sir. Who's that? Commissioner Villanueva. Oh. Uh, anyway, the whole deal is, and that's what I'm worried about. I mean, I really was dis very discouraged to see with less than a year what happened with this thing. So, and look what the fight we had with with with, with the monarch and reference how they were managing the Koi apartment, that was a mess. And we, you yourself were setting those meetings, and we discussed the commission here in itself to discuss it. Do we want to continue? And we can look at all the philosophical things, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the whole deal is we owe it to the rest of this town that we give a good, adequate home. And actually, those subsidized federal homes are not cheap. They're expensive. They're paid by the taxpayers. It's just because just they pay $100 or $50 doesn't mean that that's a full rent. The full rent is usually 600, 800 to 1,000, depending on the three, two, one bedroom. That big buck. You know, and for somebody to not keep up the maintenance not and not have return calls, not be able to get answers, it's pretty sick. And I don't want to see the quakes happen, the, the shepherds are coming out of the quakes. <laughs>
and, and this came up last time we discussed this topic, at the end of the day, the city of Tickers Carry is still a business entity. We are a business, and we got to realize the financial responsibility and what are we going to do to pay off that nearly $600,000 loan? And, and I think it's paying off itself. If you look at the big picture that we were looking before when there was report and report, and I understand too that we're going to take a business decision and we're going to win this way, but we also are communal society, community. That means that we are to prevent problems and provide, and provide safety for what we're in required to do. You know, it's not like I am an entrepreneur and a private in a private. I can do what I want to with my property. This you can't. It belongs to the taxpayer and the resident. So there's a lot of difference between that and private in the property. You see, so, and we have a responsibility to provide safety and good, comfortable homes. So that's the difference between communal property and, and private in the property. So that's what I, I don't want to see another play at the chapter. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, items from the commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Moore, you want to go ahead since you started? Okay, first of all, I don't have very much today, but I, I really, you know, I really wanted to bring out and point out one of the things that uh, what I've been talking about, and that was that we, how important our ambulance services is to this community. Uh, when I was, um, like I said, when I was in the hospital with COVID and, they, and uh, the hospital here was no longer taking COVID, I mean, we're not allowed public to be over. Not in the hospital. I was moved to COVID, um, uh, which is um, about 80 miles, 88 miles, whatever it is. Anyway, the whole deal was that at that time we were having the conflicts with the ambulance, the ambulance were breaking down on meth within a mess because of the pandemic that brought in uh, uh extra services and other stuff what really got to me is this is the difference and this is why i tell residents even the county residents to realize is the fact is that when we don't when we have one service like our ground ambulance um that that will affect everybody out of commission my bill or the flight which only require minimum the only thing they require for me to do is put my oxygen to my nose because the my oxygen was at 88 and 87 and then back in 90. Uh, my bill, my total bill for this is $63,240. This is, I mean, I have really good insurance. I have Medicare. And so it's not a problem for me because it's been taken care of. But if let's say I was a young guy in my 30s, didn't qualify for a lot of uh, service, uh, insurance, and I have my little farm starting this, if you get a deal like that, I didn't even, they wouldn't even pay for that type of thing. And guess what would happen? There'd be a lien on their on their property or everything else because they go, they want this is private enterprise. They want their money. Our ambulance, if it had transported me, it would have been 1,413 for the minimum of services. Look at the difference between 1,413 and 25 cents for the difference of and here's the bill, so it's everybody, it's $63,240. So when a problem like this occurs where we're having, not because of the city, but because of the overload and other stuff that we have, it affects everybody, you know? And this is what really gets to me, that I, I, I was very proud to see the school jump in, the state of New Mexico jump in, everybody at the hospital jump in to help us all come up with, with this type of uh, services that is very mandated, very much needed. Yet, we never heard a thing from the county whether they would help or anything. And you county residents have to understand that this is a big deal for somebody who doesn't have adequate insurance. The other thing is, I was looking at the rates and everything else. I'll be the first one to tell you that, uh, you know, the rates look good, everything. Actually, if we wind up with good ambulance and everything, I'd like for the commission to consider Possibly becoming uh, being able to do more transfer by ambulance. I think if we were to, because I look at the rates, I'm looking at the rates of the public commission. Uh, even and I was adding salary, insurance, and everything else, and I think we were still way up ahead because you're looking at lower level of licenses in unless it's very critical and go to three fly. Uh, that one might be able to provide a very good services for eastern part of the state of Mexico transporting and other things and so. This is something that uh, I like to bring to the attention of, of the commission as well as the county residents. 
and others that um, it affects everybody else when we have a real crisis in our community. It just doesn't affect the city. It affects the county residents. And that's all I can say because that's a lot of money between 50000 63000 and 1400 and if I was a startup guy who might have got hurt with a tractor or something, had to be flown, I mean, flown out because no ambulance is there, now how am I going to pay? I take 10 years of crop to pay the 63,000 thing if I only was a small farmer. So that's all I have. And all I can say is it was a good meeting today. And I thank everybody for uh, attending the meeting today. Okay. Commissioner Van Nueva, you're next. Okay, I um, want to thank everybody. Uh, my condolences to Mr. Moya on his loss. And uh, I want to thank each employee for their hard work. And that should be it there. Okay, Commissioner Hargett. Thank you, Mayor. I have no comment for that. Oh, okay. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem to Clinton. <clears throat> my condolences to Mr. Moya. Uh, just a few things. Uh, with bands of enchantment, have we made any kind of kind of movement? The last we talked to is uh, you and I had a that probably happened within the last before since the last commission meeting. Uh, we met with the cabinet secretary from the tourism department. Um, that didn't go too far. Um, they passed us over to the um, cabinet secretary for the economic development uh, side of things. Um, and she referred us over to somebody in her department to the Mexico Film Office. Uh, we met with Amber Dodson. Um, from that point, she was scheduled to meet with uh, the producers of Bands Enchantment. I've not heard if that has been completed or not. I'll reach out to them to see if they met with her. But um, in regards to further sponsorships, I've not heard anything. Uh, we've talked back and forth about it. Uh, $300,000 with the cleats. Our lodger's tax um, just got some quotes back and forth from the, for the convention center. We're looking upwards of $200,000. Um, but no, I, I really don't have a, a true update other than they were working on it, we were working on it, um, and that's where it stood. They did give us, um, per lodger's tax meeting, um, Ken did provide an update, mm -hmm. and they are working on um, they gave us a, a time extension. We had the uh, uh, option for the uh, first right of refusal, and uh, that would have expired, I think, a week or two ago. They did give us till the end of the month. And that's that's where things stand. With that, I'll, I'll just, you know, I, they're not out here, but uh, a couple of these issues, uh, I was able to watch uh, our representatives, our senators, uh, actually go across the aisle and. Uh, I've got to commend each one of them, Senator Wood, Senator Campos, uh, Representative Chatfield. Uh, we made calls to them, and they immediately got on the ball and have been trying to help us uh, keep this here in Tucson Carry. Um, you know, all we do is keep our fingers crossed, uh, but I have to, I owe it to these, those three gentlemen uh, for helping us get together with the secretary, the cabinet secretaries. Uh, of the economical development and of uh, the tourism department to try to keep this thing moving forward. So I, I hope that it works out in our favor, uh, and I appreciate those gentlemen. Along with that, uh, I also wanted to thank Senator Campos and Mr. Gallegos for uh, coming down and taking a look at our streets. And I think it kind of, uh, I know they've been down here before, but, uh, and I want to thank the city manager for you know, we must have walked two miles that day up and down Main Street. Uh, they actually seen what we've been talking about uh, for the last five years concerning the, the drainage at the handicap zones. Um, what's going on with, you know, where the state messed up when they came down to redo those streets. And uh, we did get a, a commitment that uh, one of the priorities is going to be, um, well, right over here in Adams, the one where uh, the handicap zone becomes a lake when it drizzles. Uh, they also were very interested in fixing up around Jackson Street and Rock Island, where it puddles all the way across. And during the wintertime, it's like an iced lake. And we all know the trucks that come through there. Um, it was also recommended, and I was hoping we had it at this meeting, but we didn't. But a letter from all the commissioners, 
I know we did this about five years ago when uh, I first brought this up, but uh, Mr. Gallegos thinks it'll help having another letter done because he would like to try to put in for a special project to redo the main street uh, streets down that area. Uh, that could be a couple of years down the road. I don't know why to hold their breath over it. Uh, I was just very excited that they actually came down. Senator Krumpholz took a lot of pictures. It's nice that uh, when you see somebody actually step across the aisle, and uh, I even comp I complimented him personally. I think it was it's nice to have somebody come down, and he took pictures literally of all up and down the street. And we actually had a, 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 a handicapped individual get out at that same spot and have to uh, go up that ramp and even the ramps and I didn't even notice this but the ramps were not in specs so um, I appreciate the city manager for taking the time out of the day because it's kind of a spur of the moment and I appreciate Mr. Gallegos and Mr. Campos and if maybe at the next meeting we can have that letter that all the commissioners can sign and if they're willing to and maybe we can get uh, the streets the way they're supposed to be down at Main Street. So to, to give you an update, I have had some conversation with NMDOT personnel that they have stated they are putting that on their list of projects. Um, have been in contact with them still. Uh, again, they're going to send out a survey crew to start kind of looking at things to see how the grade is and where the, the problem lies. Um, specifically, like I said, all the way from Rock Island coming back west to Adams. Um, they're talking about a project area that would go west all the way to potentially 3rd Street. We also address some maintenance concerns. Um, the metal grading is clogged for the storm drainage uh, right around 2nd Street and Main. Um, so they are supposed to have crews out here to, to clean those out. They're filled with sand and sediment and weeds. Um, so I think that was a very positive uh, visit and, and meeting. And um, I look forward to, to seeing the results of that meeting. So do I. And uh, thanks again. Thanks, everybody for coming out. Congratulations, David. Well deserved. Uh, appreciate your hard work that you do in the community and uh, what you've done with that hotel. Thank you. All right. uh, again, I'd like to thank Connie Loveland and also Scott from the Chamber on uh, last night. I'm sorry I didn't get to attend, but um, I can't be everywhere. <laughs> I try, but I can't be everywhere. Thank you, too, for looking into putting basketball back back for our youth. Uh, I did have a couple of questions on that the other day. So uh, I'm hoping that gets to go through and make it and, and comes into fruition. Um, I blank. Uh, Commissioner Moya, <laughs> I'm sorry about your sister and I tell you, it was a brother and a sister in a matter of months and hard. And I'm sorry about that. Um, thank you everyone for coming tonight. David, um, my finger wore out voting for you. So I don't want you to know that. <laughs> Every time I saw it on the internet, I went in and voted. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right, and uh, glad to see everybody here tonight. Uh, it's to be really cold tonight, so bring the plants and animals chickens in. Right. <laughs> and, uh, right, everybody have a good weekend and uh, I would even come up and do that. So move. I'll second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Gadada. Yes. Commissioner Gadada. Go ahead. Commissioner Arias. Yes. Mayor Litchfield. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis. Yes. Commissioner Moya. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.